and I threw it all in the in a dustbin and, and made my own presentation. <laughs> so um, it's it's basically the same, but I'm not going to teach you how to use logics and how to do all sorts of things. I just want to go through a few slides uh, about the, the logical explanation of why you measure things, and then maybe one or two. So. Um, Uh, I used to teach uh, animal science some years ago. I think some of in the audience might not have been born yet. It was the late 80s and the early 90s. Um, I, I taught that and, and we used this book of Dale von Fleck, Genetics for the Animal Sciences, um, as, as the book for the uh, honor students. At that stage, the universities still presented an honors after your four-year degree, which I it's a shame that they took it away, but still. And Dale von Fleck writes in the final uh, chapter, he said, the key elements needed to genetic improvement in farm animals are these. Sorry, the slide moved, shifted a bit. The first one is accurate records. And, that, and he said pertinently two types of records. And that's the way before uh, genomics. It, it's, a, it's an old book and its pedigrees and performance. So those are the building blocks for genetic merit predictions, or BLAP. And he said that. The second one is to define the relative economic value of the economic traits, and that's your breeding objective. Because now you've measured a lot of stuff, and how much emphasis must you put on each of those to select animals? So that's your breeding objectives. The, the proper use of proven breeding and selection principles. I think. Bobby has mentioned that, you, you, especially in the dairy world now in South Africa, you get four, five, six different types of genomic breeding values out there. Some are based on the Canadian stuff, some are based on the USA stuff, but you can actually, the, the technology they use there is fine, but it's not applicable for South Africa. So I think that's the, that's the crux of that, what he said. And then use the genetic evaluations in your, in your selection program. Okay, so my next question was why bother? That's the closest I could get to a computer with a database in it on the internet, on stock photos. Um, I think one of the principal things about recording is to know what's happening in your earth, irrespective of whether you use those records for selection or not. But you know exactly what's going on in your earth. You can check yourself in terms of last year's winning weights, uh, 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 early season, last season, when should it take the bull out and all that. So there's, there's a lot of other information, not just genetic information, that you are aware of. Uh, one of my, probably my biggest mentor in, in, beef, in beef performance was from Danny Bosman. And he said, Yapi, the, you will see that the guys doing performance recording, they know what's happening in their herds. It's not just a matter of being a good or a bad stud breeder, but you know what's happening in your herd. You, 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 you can immediately see when your cows are thin, are they taking the bull, uh, what weights are you, uh, are you taking off the per hectare and all that. And I think that, that is a crux of, of, of recording as well. And, uh, and with that, you can make timely decisions because now you have information. Information is knowledge and knowledge is power. So if, if you, you can't have that decision power if you don't have the knowledge that your animals are telling you. Your animals are actually telling you what's happening on your farm and whether you're, you're managing your farm correctly. Uh, also in terms of health, and, and, and I think maybe we don't put enough emphasis on, on, the, on the health aspects and, and in, in terms of animals being uh, adapted to whatever your production system is and what the environment is telling you. Uh, Benchmarking, we, we've recently started with uh, these herd reports, and it's fascinating. I don't know if the farmers look at their herd reports as much as I do sometimes. Because I, I just go onto Logix and I'll open Nobis 1 and see what the heck's happening. When is the winning weights heaviest? The early, early in the season, mid-season, last, uh, last third of the season? Uh, what's the shifts in, in your, your carving intervals over time? This, this is valuable information that you can use. And you don't have to necessarily use it for, for, for selection purposes, but you can actually, what's your animals and what's your farm telling you in terms of making the right management decisions. I, 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 for, I can't imagine farming without 
that type of knowledge. I can't understand it. How, how you will not, it's at your disposal. Uh, 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 scale is a cheap thing compared to the, the information that you get back, that you can use. So bench, benchmark yourself against others. Uh, you're in the same district, same thing. Why are the other guys uh, winning 10 kilos heavier? Are they giving creep feet or what? You can go and find out. Uh, or what is the case? Uh, and also then selection, obviously. We've spoken a lot about selection today. And also monitoring uh, over time what's happening on your form. Okay, so um, I call this nothing from nothing. Uh, I think life has taught us you get nothing from nothing. You only get something from something. So, so, and I, uh, the first part that you have to do, you have to do this part. Even if you don't do anything else, you have to uh, measure the cow-calf complex. That's the reproduction rate of your females and how good, are they good mothers or aren't they good mothers. You, I, there's no way you can be a bee farmer without that type of knowledge. So, so that's where you kick off with. Uh, there's two little stars there. Those are usually, in the olden days, when we, we, uh, we were official in my ARC, ARC times or even the government times when I started my job, uh, those two were, um, you had to do it, it was compulsory. Uh, birth particulars, that's the birth date of the calf and the sex of the calf and a few other things of the calf, and you had to do it within three days. And then I think you should all consider mating lists so well. When you put the bull in, record that. Because you get so much extra information out in terms of 100 cows went to the bull, how many did take? But because if you just record births, you don't know whether that cow was actually exposed or some cows or heifers were actually exposed to the bull or not. So in terms of benchmarking, you can get so much more out if you use mating lists as well. So please do if you... If you of course, consider it. So that's the, especially the bull in date, so that you, if today I've put this bull to this uh, 15, 20, 30 heifers or cows, so that we know they had a chance and they didn't take, so they moved on maybe half a season or a full season or whatever the case might be. And then uh, with, and then the second one is then the carving ease. We also have a carving ease score. So you can score if you are there and, and, and you can actually observe that. And, and, and not many farmers use it. They usually easy carving. Uh, I don't know if that's a score for, or I, don't, I don't know what the extreme is. But so so if, you, if you do that, please um, do the carving ease score, but also then birth weight within three days. That's uh, the, the, that. And then in terms of this cow-calf complex would be the winning weight of the calf, and you can weigh that calf any time before five, between five and nine months. So you have, you have ample time to do it, especially when you have a, a bigger herd or whatever, uh, but as close as you can get to seven months because we correct those weights to 205 days, which is seven months. So um, if you have a limited breeding season, if you have you should have a limited breeding season. And if you have that, then obviously the, those calves are comparable in the contemporary group. So those contemporary groups need to be defined. And I'm not going to go through the detail. Maybe in a, in a course, one can go through the detail. You need to define this group of calves was, were treated, uh, was treated differently to that group of calves. And, and, and that's a contemporary group. So if you, if you have two farms or you, you for some reason, you treated uh, them differently. It needs to be in two groups. The same for birth weight. Very important. The same for birth weight. We, uh, we had a very interesting uh, um, case. In, uh, in the olden days, we didn't uh, actually consider uh, contemporary groups for birth weights, uh, and now we do. Uh, of somebody that it was a terrible drought, and he moved some of his cows to different farms. Uh, you know, he, he got people to help him, and, and when the the stuff came back, the breeding values was farm related because he didn't indicate which groups went to which farm. So Blub couldn't take the environment out because we didn't know that there were better treatments on different farms than others. Once we, 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 we instituted that, the breeding values drew right because then we, we, we could actually account for that. Okay, so, so, and then very important, and I would highly, highly, highly recommend that, when you win your calves and you weigh your calves, weigh your cows as well. Bobby has shown you 
the, the, the value in terms of maintenance. And then also the, the ratio of calf to cow. I, I don't like that ratio, the way people brag about it. Uh, you know, you find people say, no, I will select animals uh, that, um, where the calf is 50% of the dam. 50% uh, of nothing is also nothing. Eh? So please, uh, uh, it's, it's, and, and on an individual basis, it's, it's, you can manipulate that figure easily. I can manipulate it for very easy. I just wean all my cow, calves at five months. I correct the weights up to seven months, and they all look good. They're all over 50%. So please don't use it as a bragging tool. We, we do, we do geni the genetic value for the cow, the cow weight, and we do the genetic value for the calf's weight. So post blub, after blub, Bobby works out a ratio. And that's much, much, much more uh, uh, of value than the phenotypic values. Remember, phenotypic values are, are the actual weights. Okay, so that's a cow-calf complex. Then post weaning, um, I said effort is information. So if you put effort in, you get information out. So um, post winning weights is just more than growth. So the two weights that I think you, you all are familiar with is the yelling weight and the 18 month old weight. And you will see the yelling weight you can take any time between nine and 15 months. So you have ample time to do that. And, and the yelling weight is much, much more popular than the 18 month old weight, especially for those herds that calf early, you know, at two years, rather than at, 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 at um, three years of age. So, because then, when you do the 18 months, those animals are already pregnant, and so forth. So, so um, that's, that's a, the value. But the other value is what we call felt adaptability, uh, or, or meeting target weights for, for, for females to be mated. So if you have those weights, you can actually use that information to assist you in ter terms of your management programs. And uh, Bobby is now experimentally using these weights or the gains uh, in a so-called felt adaptability breeding value. It's early days, it's not out yet, but that's the type of research and development one can, can uh, do when you have these weights available. Because animals differ. In terms of the weight, they look good because they, 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 their mother helped them out, uh, up to seven months and they just had to grow that part from seven to 12 months. But, but when, the, when the, 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 the calf is on its own, how does it actually uh, you know, uh, um, do uh, through the winter? So, so we're looking at, at that as, as an um, adaptability value. And then uh, more effort uh, equals knowledge. And this is our growth tests. Um, obviously, we mimic in the growth test of young bulls, we mimic the market situation or the value chain in South Africa, uh, where you have feedlots and all that. But, but you, have, you have ample ways of dealing with that. You can have an intensive growth test of 80 days or whatever, or you can have a, a very extensive growth test, a felt bull test, where, uh, that runs over six months or more. So you have, it, it's up, the choice is up to the, to the, to the, to the breeder to do that. So um, uh, the recording needed is regular weight recordings. And you can see if you do an extensive test, your, um, you, you, can st you can, the Namibians do this. Very interesting. Some of the Namibians do this. They only start the adaptation when, when, when the oldest animal is about 12 to 14 months old. Then they have a month adaptation and then they, they grow them out in a growth test. Uh, so it depends on, 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 on your needs. Uh, uh, the feed intake tests, uh, the animal needs to be less than 270 days if, if, if our guidelines are correct. <laughs> I used the guidelines like last night to do this uh, at the onset uh, when, where, of, of that test. So the feed intake test uh, has become very popular in South Africa. When, when I was still working in government and later in ARC, uh, we always had the five official test centers uh, then later on we had the Elsenberg one, which was a joint effort between uh, Elsenberg and, and some farmers. And Sadnik was al always there and there was another one in the Free State that's no, no longer there. At the, currently we have 10 privately owned uh, intake, no, there are more, because the uh, growth safe, there are two growth safe ones. So, so there are 12 privately owned um, um, intake test centers in South Africa, privately owned. 
plus the, the few of the, 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 the ARC. So, so it, it, uh, it has become very, very popular. Then Bobby has mentioned the real-time ultrasound scanning. Uh, and we do it uh, during a growth test or post-weaning weight. So you can, if you, if you want your heifers or your females to be scanned, you can ask us, we can come out and scan them. You'll have to pay us because it costs money to get the guy on your farm. Uh, but you can also uh, get your females to be scanned uh, for eye muscle area and, and the fat depth and, and, the, and the marbling. So, so that, that's being done, but it's usually at the, at the end of a, of a growth test. And the same with the body measurements. So the, the, um, the, the body measurements we take is scrotum circumference. Uh, a lot of, uh, or some of the breeds have minimum standards for scrotum circumference um, based on weight and age of the animal. Uh, we also take uh, height, uh, depending on the breed. Some of the, uh, the British or American derived uh, link breeds usually take rump height, but uh, the locally, local breeds we do shoulder height. It's, uh, the correlation is possibly 0.99 or so between the two. Uh, we do body length, sort of a little bit diagonal. Uh, skin thickness, um, so these are the, uh, the body measurements we also, we also do. Um, just for interest sake, why do we take height? Do you know why we, we do this? Let's say you have an intensive growth test and those animals are about between 12 and 14, 15 months old at the end of the test when you do these measurements. If, if, do you know why we do it? Why do we go through the trouble of, of measuring these, these uh, heights and length? Income from stud, for stud book or what? No. Yeah, your skeletal growth is the first growth in, 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 in a mammal, of being a human or an animal. So uh, by, by measuring at, at a year or 18, between a year and 14 months old, you have roughly 80 to 90, 70 to 90% of the skeletal growth is already completed. So it gives you a very, very accurate estimation of the maturity type of that animal. So you, and, and, and you, you would know the, the, the Angus and Herefords in the US, they use the so-called Missouri frame score between a one and a nine or whatever. It's basically the same. They score animals. I don't know why the Americans would score something that you can measure. If you can measure, it's much more accurate than scoring. But they score them between a one and a nine, but it's basically the same thing uh, that one can use in terms of maturity type. And that's very much linked to your, your cow size now in, in, in the end as well. Um, okay, so the, these are just some of the um, reports coming out. These, these, these are the breeding values. Actually, Bobby has done that, so I'm not going to dwell on that. This is from Logics, from Animal Information and Logics. If you click on uh, Performance, you get all these breeding values. And you will see they're, they're very interesting ones. I don't know if you ever checked it. Uh, there's a residual feed intake, and there's a, a cow-calf ratio at birth, and cow-calf ratio at wean. There's breeding values for that. So if you, if you want to select for that, it's there. It's, uh, just by merely weighing your cow and your calf, you get, you get these, the, these, this, uh, these breeding values back. Okay, and the carcass ones. Uh, and then the selection values that Bobby has, has mentioned, the fertility, winner calf. Uh, the Bonsmaras also have a winner calf value, which is basically uh, the cow value without fertility. I, I always make jokes with them to say, why the heck do you do that? But okay, maybe for a, for a, 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 a terminal sire, that could, be, that could possibly be a reason for that. Okay, that, that's been set. Basically, Bobby has given that. And you've seen the, the, the catalog uh, as well. This is a uh, beef master catalog, but these are the, the, the values. Um, and then um, in terms of getting your data on the system, the most popular ones would be the farm software, some of the farm softwares, and then also the Logix web interface. We, we find more and more breeders directly use the Logix web interface. We're currently working on, a, on an app it's, it's, it's in test phase, and, and, um, and that will also make life easier in terms of getting your data on, on the system. I say app, it works on, a, on your phone, on your tablet, and your PC, basically. Um, 
Okay, and th these are just some of the other reports there. You can see is the logics herd analysis. So I, I would highly suggest that you, you pull your logics, your herd analysis from time to time, where you can see how you benchmark, phenotypic benchmarks. What is the winning weights over time in your herd? Uh, how, how do you compare with the rest of the breed? Where you have, what, what are the, the, the common uh, culling reasons in your herd? Stuff like that. I think um, it's, it's very interesting data. You can see this guy, for example, that's birth weight. He's weighing all his animals. Winning weight is, is just about weighing all of them. And for yearling weight, just half of them, which is possibly only the females and so forth. So you, you can, at a glance, uh, check what's happening, uh, what's happening in the herd. Nobi, I could, that fina gemaak, ek dink, uh, dat so nie gehelp het as ek nou vir julle precies gewaas waarmee jy klik en waarmee jy wat doen, uh, uh, om dit te doen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.